20, 17 iMac, 21.5 inch Core i5 3 gigahertz processor. These glass displays look really nice, but you really got fingerprints that get all over them. If I can focus up, that is. These are generally nice systems that run quick, but they do have a problem. Apple decided to go with a hard drive instead of a solid state drive. With these coming in 2017, you'd expect that they should have a solid state drive in them, but they do not. In fact, Apple might do a hybrid type of setup in a lot of their system. The conventional hard drive goes right here, and the Apple proprietary SSD goes right down here. Now this one's out of a laptop, but it's the same idea. There's a really small capacity SSD, Apple proprietary. It helps control the computer's boot up. And then the operating system and all the software is sitting on this drive right here. Conventional hard drives can be pretty robust, pretty reliable, but they're slow. On the inside, you have a platter that spins around one direction or the other direction. And then you have a little magnetic head that goes back and forth to read and write the data. Versus the solid state drive, there are no physically moving parts inside of the solid state drive so it runs a heck of a lot faster. These platter driven drives will generally run anywhere from 5400 rpm to around 10,000 rpm. No moving parts. The max transfer rate on these is up to 200 megabytes per second. Maximum transfer speed on this style SSD close to 600 megabytes per second. If you have this style M.2 NGFF SSD you can get up to about 600 megabytes per second. But if you have a true M.2 NVMe drive this can get up to 7,000 plus megabytes per second. And if you want speed, especially if you're making your own desktop, you want NVMe style SSDs. But in these older iMacs, you have to go with the original SATA style. And Apple cheaped out. They cheated you out of speed by putting in these conventional style hard drives. Let's swap it out. Make sure you've unplugged your iMac from power before you do anything on it. Otherwise, you risk getting shocked. Unlike the feeling I have for my wife, she is shockingly gorgeous. On these style, thin quarter inch on the side, you need a pizza cutter. You have to use a plastic one, otherwise you risk busting a display. You go in and trim up the sides. I've already got this prepped. And then carefully tilt it down towards you, as I don't have it prepped enough. Once you have it open, carefully disconnect the two cables from the LCD connection to the motherboard on the motherboard side. On the top one, you push down on the top a little bit, and you pull up on the bottom part of it, and you just slide it out. And the second one, the LCD cable, you use your fingernail. Okay, this one's a little bit more stuck, but you flip it backwards and then you carefully wiggle it out. And now the LCD is disconnected. And now with the LCD disconnected, the easiest way I figure out to work on this is have something down below padded that you can just drop the display carefully onto without removing the adhesive from back here. You want to do that because this will help keep the screen aligned and you don't have to fidget with trying to realign the screen when you put it back up. Below I have a box full of hard drives that's going to be nice and heavy to keep it stable. And the back is pushed up against the wall so it won't move backwards. Torque T9 screwdriver time. One, two, three, four screws to remove. And be careful because that's the power supply. You don't want to touch the power supply. I've been shocked by Macs before. So always remember to discharge the Mac before you open it up. I have the screws and the covers and now I can easily remove the drive. Now you want to pull back this component right there. That is the SATA connection. And now we can start cloning. And while I'm cloning it, I'm going to set these screws and the covers down somewhere so I can dust out the computer and it can run nice and cool when it's being put back together. I'm actually using a Windows PC to clone over the drive. And because Windows can't read a Mac drive, I am preformatting as GPT before I even plug the drive in so I know the difference. Since I'm going same size drive to same size drive, I can use raw copy to do this. If it was not the same size drive, I would have to use something like Carbon Copy Cloner. But raw copy clones that better than Carbon Copy Cloner. And now with it dusted out, we can remove this old adhesive and get ready to seal up. Use a thin razor to get between the adhesive and the case. And once you've got it, you can slowly pull it back, but you might lose contact at some point, especially around those components right there. And you're going to do the same on this screen side. Just be really careful not to scratch the glass. But on this glass side, you'll have the glass. You'll have a plastic kind of rubber protection, and then you'll have the adhesive itself. Only go for the adhesive. Do not remove this extra layer down here. Quietly satisfying. 
not so quietly satisfying. You can tell it's a possible bad hard drive because it takes Windows forever to load. And no, it's not because there's an Apple hard drive plugged in there, it's because the drive itself is failing. With the old adhesive off, we can install a new adhesive. We're actually going to use the 27 inch iMac adhesive for one reason. It's cheaper and easier to just worry about having one type of inventory that you can cut down to size for the 21.5 inch. Also in doing the display the way I'm doing it, you can save these pieces of adhesive for other projects. Carefully align the white side out as opposed to the clear black inside. And before you stick it down, you can actually cut off this excess right there. Snip. And now you have extra adhesive for other projects too. This top one, I'm sorry, from the center, I'm gonna cut it off down here at the end, like so. For this top piece, I'm not aligning to that part or to that part. I'm going to align it to the notch. Once I get it lined up there, I'll just snip from here and I'll snip from there. Taped on there. We're gonna cut this part and then remove this other adhesive on the back. Should look something like that. And the same thing for this side, just lining up with the notch. I'm gonna trim from the top first after I got it lined up and then paste it down. Lined up, adhered, gonna line up and trim down there and then paste it down. All done. If you just come into computer management and you only format as GPT, your drive will look like this. And when you come down to clone, you won't know which one's different. And the reason is sometimes the Mac drive shows up as unallocated, just like this one showing unallocated. So pre-format the drive beforehand and make sure you wipe out that extra partition through stuff like AMOEI, Partition Assistant. And when you load up the drive, this is the Mac drive. This is the blank drive. Now we can set the source disk as that disk one, and we can set the target disk as disk two. If this is still here, raw copy will error out. So it has to look like this. Copy. Yes, we're going to proceed. And now we wait. After the clone, before we set up the system, we're going to attach the cables after we put the hard drive in, before we put the bumpers on, and test out the system. See if it works. Before we remove the adhesive and have everything sealed up, we just really want to make sure the clone completed successfully. And with the bar loading like that, it looks like it should. And with the computer up and running, we can see that it is a solid state drive. With the test out, we put the rover bumpers back on, we secure the SSD, and now we're going to to reinstall the display. Before we remove the adhesive strip covers, we're going to plug in the display cables, close it, and just do a test boot to make sure everything works. The system is powering up. We check to make sure it can pick up all the different wireless networks. We check the webcam, and we also check the sound making sure it can actually pick up us, and we make sure it can play music and sounds through the speakers. And now with it ready to go, we can now remove the adhesive covers. Whoop. Whoop. Push it back together and just give the edges a nice firm slide pat down. And now after wiping down the display, the computer is nice and clean and ready for the customer to pick up.